Hey everybody, today I'm bringing you a fun game that I think shows off a lot of cool concepts with Aatrox versus Camille, and more in particular, how to carry a game where your team tends to be total duds, but you've gotten the jungler and you've gotten fed, and you can maybe actually pull your team out of a rut. So I'm playing Aatrox, standard conqueror, ignite, flash, Camille's going first strike, teleport, ignite. Now, first strike is something on Camille that's been generating more popularity lately. I'm not sure if it's actually her best rune, but it, it has pretty good stats, uh, low pick rate still, so it's it's something new. This Camille, I didn't pull for my jungler, so I didn't have to uh, you know give away priority or anything like that, but I made a few mistakes in the early game, I'll point them out. I kind of bumbled through this early game, but uh, fortunately through, let's call it macro decisions, I played a bit better. So. When she used her first W, I held my Q, and I just hit her with a Q1, Q2 when she went to CS. But Camille's W is on, I think it's a 16 second cooldown, and my Q is on a 14 second. So because I waited, she actually got in a second W before I could get back to my Q. And you can see here, I go back again, and uh, I actually ward this brush to get a free passive hit. Because um, if I went, if I just walked into the brush, she would have been able to activate her uh, passive shield. Whereas my passive is 225 range, so if I know where she is, I can actually hit her. Now, so, because I ward here, I don't ward for the jungler, but I figured my jungler said he was going to come to top, and he was clearing the top lane, and I figured, okay, let's just get as much damage as we can into Camille. And you can see this is kind of the first, I'm not going to call it a bumble, but, um, yeah, I'm st I, I'm not doing perfect in trades. Now, it is hard to do perfect in trades into Camille. She's uh, pretty, pretty, pretty good at trading. But, uh, yeah, that's not, this is actually, I would say that's my first mistake. I noticed here that when I went for my Q2 and then E'd forward my Q2, that actually she would walk towards me. That's one thing, I, I want to pause this here real quick, that's one thing that you need to know. If your opponent is always walking towards you, so you hit the Q1, you hit the Q2, then you E forward the Q2 to crit, right? What a lot of people do is they'll walk towards you, and then the Q2 will go over them. And particularly into a champion like Camille, that means you end up in melee with her, which can be quite bad. So what I did do here is pretty much what I wanted to do. I ended up baiting her. I popped the ignite, so we have full vision of her the whole time. She doesn't have flash, so this is pretty free. Once Camille's got uh, the the kindred damage on her, I just back off. That one's pretty good, right? I mean, you don't need the kill, and Camille does carry a lot, so sometimes you just do that, right? So my only the, the thing I would I would call out that I did wrong here is Camille was level three, and particularly with her ignite, she could likely have just bullied me out of my flash if uh, she was a little bit more aggressive. She wasn't aggressive, but I think she actually could have bullied me out of my flash. But yeah, I, I just, I, I let her get level three and then I didn't really play that safe. I, I had the jungler anyway, so it didn't really matter. Uh, yeah. I didn't move forward and hit her with my passive there because she could have hit me back, but then I walked up and hit her anyway because she let me. <laughs> so at this point, I, I'm, just, I'm just sort of last hitting. You can see there's nothing really here. I got the kill on her. I have Doran Shield. Doran Shield is basically the always go right now, by the way. I have the Doran Shield. I'm just regenerating some HP, taking some Q pokes at her. She teleported back, so she actually has long sword advantage here. So I'm actually down items. I dodge out her W. I go for a poke. This one was important. She E'd to the wall, and then I knocked her off the wall using my E, so she couldn't get back into me, giving me once again a free trade. So she entered this line. She came back in. She had a long sword advantage, potion advantage and I had nothing health advantage she had a large health advantage too so at this point I've actually through micro trades managed to even this out and uh, yeah so I don't have a ward but I've been playing so far back that I don't think it really matters I I'm not really going aggressive into her anyway I'm just whacking with a few cues and backing off I even have my flash still so yeah she goes like way too aggressive into trades and holds her E a bit too long in fact let me go back and show that again so, I kind of jockey for position because you want to get a clean W on her. And here I, I use the Q1 and then I use the W because I figure, you know, she's probably going to try to back off, use a Q into a W, which is literally what she does. So then I crit it with the Q2 and she, at this point, using her um, E would have been too late. She would have been pulled back into it. So I just whack her into a Q3, into a passive, E4 to get another auto, and then she E's away. So this is actually a really bad trade from her. Despite the fact that she had her passive, this is, I, I talked about this in my last video, level 5 Aatrox is a really big, uh, 
power spike? People say I talk too quickly, by the way. I don't think I talk too quickly. I just have a lot of things to say. Uh, I need to pause this for a second to say something. Um, level 5 Aatrox has a really big power spike. That's when his Q damage starts really turning on. So despite the fact that Camille got her passive shield up, the Q2 crit, the full W, the passive hit, the Q3 crit, those pummeled through her passive shield, particularly because I'm 5 to her 4, those pummeled through her and win the trade. So this is when things get interesting. So... Kindred pings that she's coming top. Uh, I think you can actually see that uh, on the minimap right here. Kindred pings she's coming top. So I start playing really, really aggressive because she's right here. Unfortunately, no Lelia shows up. So let me let me show you my thought process on this one. I'll speed forward real quick. So I'm playing aggressive because I see the Kindred coming up, right? But Lelia comes up and I see Lelia and I'm like, oh shit. So I start running away. I immediately flash out of Camille's E. Because I know if I get hit by Camille Z, if she gets in melee, I'm just dead. If I get stunned and Camille just does auto Q reset, auto auto Q reset, and Lelia's got her damage, like I'm just dead. So I pull out and I try to buy as much time as I can. You can literally see I'm literally buying as much time as I can. So I hit Lelia. I think she only has one stack on her. Okay, she's got two stacks on Prance, but this isn't early game. This is not enough movement speed. So I hit her with the Q into the W. Then I um. Actually get to pull back into a Q3. So Lelia actually, I'm going to show you this again. Lelia actually bumbles this up pretty badly. Because she runs dead ass into me. And she's running dead ass into me. Because she thinks that um, it's a 2v1. So she can afford to just ram into Aatrox. But you can't you can't just ram into Aatrox like this. So I don't get the Q2. But, you know, we get the passive hit. The Q1 crit. The Q2 crit. The W pull. Kindred comes up, because I know Kindred's mopping up, and Kindred just easy mop up, two kills, no issue here. Let's uh, fast forward through this. This is just us pushing the lane. We take the turret plates, I go back to base. I believe at this point, yeah, I went Iron Spike Whip and two Long Swords, so I went no Ability Haste and I just maximized my damage, which, um, no Ability Haste maximizing your damage. So I get the Q2 crit here, the Q3 crit. She's too far away from her wall on the opposite side here. Let me actually show this one more time so you guys can really understand how she messed this up. I go for the Q crit, I get the Q2, Q3, I hit it with the W. Now at this point she's running away from me because some people won't think that you'll W at the end of your Q chain, right? What sense does that make? So she's trying to run the long way, but she can't E to this wall. She doesn't have the distance. So she could E to this wall to get out of it, but then she's just in the river. So she makes a mistake here. It actually, I, at this point, she's just kind of doomed, but she figures, look, I'm not going to use my E, I'm going to E to this wall, but I literally just walk in front of her, and I use my ult to get more movement speed. Passive hit, and I still have the movement speed from the ult. Auto attack hit, easy kill. Easy kill. Easy kill. So let's uh, smooth this again. Again, that was with my whip and my double long sword, so we went full damage on this one. Just mopping up, taking a turret plate. She goes for like a little play on me, and I'll, I'll show you exactly my thought process here. She goes for the E on me, she goes for the passive hit on me. Now she's used her E, she's used her passive, and watch what she positions on here. Look at her positioning. She immediately rams herself into this corner where she can't possibly do anything. She can't do anything because she's rammed behind the turret. She has no mobility, she can't dodge anything. So I immediately just go for the Q1. Boom, Q1 hit. Hit her with the W. Now, does she have boots? No. So it's going to be really hard for her to get out of this W with no boots. So Q2 crit. But you look, she literally can't dodge the Q2 because of her positioning. Q2 crit. E4, the Q3. Whip, passive. Didn't kill her. Pop the ignite. That kills her. Back out of the turret. Easy kill. So at this point, she has died four times and the thing is none of these deaths have been like particularly like oh my god this is the worst thing she could have done right like okay yeah a few of them were dumb but at this point she's died four times <laughs> let's see my bot lane manages to get us the early mountain dragon mountain dragon's always good bot lane is zero two jungler is three i have two so the jungler and me actually uh we have all the kills between us right now <laughs> So what do we do? I think I get the gore drinker. Yeah, we get the we get the full gore drinker at this point. I start pushing in. Um, Camille gets an assist, but then she dies, I think, or something like that. I don't really even remember. Yeah, so Camille, I, I'm not gonna show me. So I I, I let the, the minion side of the turret. Camille's trying to roam. 
It's not really working. Yeah, okay, so here we go. So she tries to roam. She finds the Vigar. She goes in on the Vigar. I kill Nico. Actually, I want to show that one because this one was actually rather ingenious. I want, uh, actually, I'm going to go back. I'm going to show you guys this one. I wanted to show you guys what was happening here, but I'm going to show you what I did. So I was trying to back, and Nico comes up here, and Nico's like, you can't back. So I think, okay, well, you're a bitch. So I pop my ult. I run in, and let me show you this in slow motion. I go for the W. Why do I go for the W here? Because she can't escape it. Because she started casting her ultimate. And when you start casting your ultimate, what do you do? As Nico, when you cast your ultimate, you root yourself. So she instantly gets pulled back into it, which cancels out the fact that she stunned me, because I get unstunned. And she gets pulled back in. Q2 crit. Should be a, uh, yep, another hit. And that's the Gore Drinker active to cancel out of the uh, Q3. And easy kill. So at this point, I'm fed, and people are underestimating me, and they're trying to mess with me. I mean, Nico's not even that far behind. Here, I actually did something that I found ingenious too. I actually want to show you guys this ingenious part. I ran the fuck away because there's no way I could possibly win this one. I crit her. She doesn't realize that there's just no way I could beat her. There's just no way. Uh, does she have ult? She doesn't have ult, but there's just no way. Uh, uh, ult she would need with two Qs and I'm dead. But she gets afraid. <laughs> maybe if I crit the Q2, maybe if I get the Gore Drinker, I could have beat her. I don't know. But, in my opinion, I, I thought I was doomed, so I just flashed away. Here's my team. By the way, this is what I have to carry. Yeah. So that's what I have to carry throughout this game. So what do I do? Top turret is dead. Top laner is obliterated. So we're gonna go right to bot lane. Why are we going bot lane? Because we need to go bot lane. You will stay where I want you to stay. Draven is 3-0. He has an Eclipse. He has a Sheen. I have a Gore Drinker, Merc Treads, and Warhammer. So I'm actually a little bit... I'm a little bit ahead of Draven. He doesn't have boots either. So I'm actually... A, I'm a decent chunk ahead of Draven, but because I have Merc Treads, it doesn't do much. Camille goes for the ult on me. She walks out of my W, but I can easily bump that up. The rest of them start running because... Well, I mean, let's be honest, I'm pretty fed. And I don't think I... Oh, no. Actually, I do get this one. Okay, this one's fucking insane. So I get the Q2 crit into the passive. He's under turrets. So I can't really do much. So what do I do? I see Kindred running up. She throws her slow. Oh, she's thrown her slow? Well, then he's doomed. So he dies. We go for the, the Sona. Now, I haven't actually ulted at this point. So I ult. You might notice, when did I ult? My ult just comes back here, and I pop my ult. Now, I've already healed with the triumph. I've already healed with everything. So why do I pop this ult? No, actually, I didn't heal with the triumph. Okay, so I get a little bit more triumph. You get 25% bonus healing on your ult at rank 1. So we get that bonus healing. We get that bonus second wind. We get that bonus door and shield healing. And it amounted to just enough to keep me alive. Let's fast forward again here. This one, I actually make a huge blunder. I don't notice that the dragon is coming alive. But fortunately, my team managed to kill Lilia, Lilia. So I managed to just sort of push out top lane and I'm like, oh fuck, oh fuck, the dragon, oh fuck. These people all start fighting. So we get the kill on Draven, but we lose the Vigar. We lose the Nautilus. Now I come in here from the back. We pop this ult again. I, I go for the Sona because I figure you might as well remove the healer right away. Get the Sona, go back onto the Camille. Now I have... Uh, Gore Drinker, Warhammer, two Longswords, full Conqueror. We're pretty fed here, right? Unfortunately, healing isn't everything. But I got him all low. Kindred comes in. Let's watch this in slow motion. Kindred gets one kill. Kindred gets two kills. Now this Camille, she has a Warhammer and a Sheen. So Kindred mobs up all three kills. I have one dependable person on my team, which is which is nice. It's nice to have at least one dude you can rely on, right? It's a dragon, obviously. How much to talk about on this one? We just sort of reset back to farming, I think. Yeah, so I went uh, Sorodas this time. Some people go Dust Dance second to... Like, y you have options. You can either try to protect how fed you are, or you can try to do more damage and be even more fed. I went to do more damage and be even more fed, because as you might see on my team, there's me, there's Kindred, the rest of these people maybe aren't 
the most reliable. And and maybe, I mean, it depends on you, right? So, Vigor is reliable, though, and putting up a cage, because I'm just gonna speed this. He puts up the cage, we get a kill. That's pretty boring. Now, here's another mistake I made. This is another blunder, let's call it. So, I went in for this kill. We get the kill on Draven. I kind of go in here. I get rooted. I run away from the stun. Now, I'm thinking to myself, okay, I'm full HP. I'm in my ult. Let's kill these people. Unfortunately, my team seems to have not had that same idea. And uh, they're literally all walking away. Now, I do get the kill on Sona. I flash out. I think maybe I'll live, get rooted, and I end up dead. Which isn't great, because I'm level... I don't know, what level am I? The higher level than them. The higher level you are, the more XP you give to people. And remember, the higher level you are, the more XP you need to get to the next level. So it's like compounded. They need less XP to get to their levels because they're a lower level than me and they get more XP from killing me because I'm a higher level. So killing a high level person can rapidly catch a team up. It, just a few kills and a team can actually be caught up in levels pretty quickly. So nothing's happening, nothing's happening. Let's uh, skip through all this stuff. It's just me running around. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, okay, let, let's look at this kill. I mean, it's not really anything special. Draven runs up. I notice him. I'm like, oh, fuck, it's Draven. And he's like, oh, fuck, it's Aatrox. I bought a chain vest at this point, so the fact that he has Eclipse and Essence Reaver, like, it, it still hurts, but you can see it's not it's not out-damaging my healing hurt. And because I have that slow on Cyrilda's, you can actually see here, I hit Camille in her ult when I have nothing better to do. Healing is healing. And I want to show you, this is this is just a neat little trick here. I just, I'm just going to show you a neat little trick here. What you can do, if you if you really need to get things done, right, in a short amount of time, you notice I E'd forwards and then press Gore Drinker. And because I E'd forwards while pressing Gore Drinker, the Gore Drinker went off while I was E'ing forwards. So by the time my E animation was done, I had already hit the Gore Drinker, which by the way, proc the Cerildus slow, and then I could already be auto attacking. If you E forwards, then auto attack, then Gore Drinker, you're wasting a lot of time in animations. And when, when time's of the essence to get the Draven to die, I don't, I don't think it was actually that important, but it's just something neat that you can you know, be aware of. So we get the turret, easy turret. Um, at this point, I was a little bit torn on what really to be doing. My team went here and they ended up dying, so I thought, ah, fuck. Now I go here. Draven is obviously still the biggest threat, so I'm just in operation, fuck Draven. Draven dies to Camille. Sorry, Camille, no, Kindred. At this point, I'm going for Camille, fall asleep. That's just a bug with Lolia's animation. Kindred actually ends up dying because Lolia is asleep. That's a lot. But unfortunately for their team, I am how fed? Very fed. And remember that Q2 is a really good hitbox. I don't have the distance, but uh, yeah. Now this one, you're gonna watch this one. I am ignited, I am burning. No, oh, no, we miss the Q1, we get hit. Oh god, we just we, we just we just gotta watch that one again. So I fake like I'm attacking Lolia here. Nico gets a little bit overly bold, and she's dead with the Q3E. Let's just watch this. Let's just watch this in slow motion. I don't know she's here, so I'm I'm just throwing abilities and I'm hoping they're working. I figured that one didn't hit. Okay, let's go for a Q2E at forwards. Fortunately, I actually got into her true damage. And, and you can see here, once again, let me, let, me, let me really show you how you have to manage your time really well sometimes, because you're only going to have a second or two in the actual fight. So let's, I, I want to slow this down real hot, and I want to show you everything we do here. So use a Q1, doesn't work. Use a Q2, E it forwards, right? I see her here, so we cancel that into Gore Drinker, cancel that into our passive hit, cancel that into our Q3 hit, cancel that into a W. Easy kill. Okay, that was actually not easy. Get the turret. You always want to get the turret. Now, Dragon is spawning, so I actually feel bad for this Draven. I mean, let me just show you. He, I, I don't know why. Like, why is he? Why is he moving up like this? They have. Uh, they have one ward here, 
right? Like, is, is that it? Is that good enough? You get the one ward so you feel safe moving in front of your entire team? You shouldn't. Just an easy kill. Javen doesn't have much mobility. Um, you yeah. know. Team fight happens. We just stomp the shit out of this team fight. Well, I stomp. It's, it's not really worth watching. It's just a typical dragon fight where we just scared them off when we got into dragon. So, you notice I've been focusing the dragons here. We're, we're going for the dragon soul because that's really important. I've been focusing with my team. I'm not split pushing. I'm not farming. I'm not doing any of that. Where, I mean, is, it, what even is my CS? My CS is 143 at 20 minutes. So, I'm kind of farming, but let's be honest, I've, I've kind of dropped the idea of farming to focus more on attacking people. Now, we're, we're trying to focus on the Baron Vision here. Now, this one, I, I made a few... I, I'm going to scroll back here. I made a few mistakes with this one, but it ended up working because I was so fed. But, okay, so I go in the brush. I dodge her E. Now, she doesn't know I'm here. I just got in this brush. And this brush is between her and her team. So, somehow, she didn't notice I was here. And she was walking to join her team. So, I hit her with the Q. Now, remember, I got Cerildas, so it's got that 30% slow. Hit her with the Q. Into the W. Into the Q2. Into the passive hit. Into the Q3. I E forward the Gore Drinker trying to kill her, but she hourglass through it. I go to sleep. Now, at this point, this is where I screw up. At this point, I kind of scramble. My brain kind of scrambled here because I was thinking, like, oh, my God. Like, I, I didn't get the kill on her, and I'm like, I need a killer. I need a killer. I need a killer. And... I didn't really think about what I was doing. Nico flashes in the stun. I believe I get ignited here. Yeah, I get ignited. I'm, I'm basically dead. Now, if I was not this fed, this would not have worked. But at this point, I've got the death stance finally. So we're actually able to mitigate damage. We're able to heal up. The death stance is kicking in. We're getting good healing on kills. The Laya, remember, she's got no movement speed active. So she's just as slow as everybody else right now. We mop everybody up. Remember that Cerildas is so good. Look at it slowing down everyone. Just getting kills. Easy Baron. Game's pretty much done at this point. And, and you'll see, I've just been focusing on, on team fighting. On Basically, we're trying to hide that the Viger and the Yone aren't really performing well. We're basically trying to hide that by always being with them and always team fighting and dragging everything to around us and kindred is just serving a very good second threat so they can't only focus on me the few times i have died uh kindred's been there to mop things up for us so i went for this and uh i think this is pretty much the end of it let's slow down here yeah i'm i'm, I'm being careful because if they chain cc me i can die because uh, I actually went with the Black Cleaver last. So I have Black Cleaver, Cyril does Dust and Score Drinker. Um, I went with this build to do as much damage with as much ability haste as I could. But the thing was, and the reason I'm spacing so much between me and them at this stage, is because I know, yeah, even though I have 51% tenacity through runes and through items, if they root me, it's going to be a root into a stun, into a Draven knockback, and I'm going to take four autos before this is done, and I'll be dead. So I'm, I'm spacing pretty hard here, knowing I can do a shit, shitload of damage. Kindred ults, but Kindred actually dies here to Draven. So I'm down Kindred. Um, that's not great. I'm taking the turret. They got two people on me, but I'm pretty fed. And so I go down to here at half speed. So at this point, I'm thinking like, okay, I gotta get out of here. Once again, Nico uses her W, or sorry, uses her ult in my W, but it doesn't do her any good. I need to get the kill on her, because if I don't get the kill on her, I'm doomed. So I literally just rolled the 50-50 on which clone it was. I didn't actually know. That activates the Dust Dance healing, that activates everything. My W got blocked by a minion. We use the Cerildas to slow down Draven and get the heal. At this point, their team is doomed. Nautilus has slowed them. Easy pickup on the Sona. The last person less is Lolaya. Hit Lolaya with the Q, hit Lolaya with the auto. I've got over 100 ability ace now with this build, so we just instantly into another QE. Dre Viger picks up with the ult. That's the end of that. So, what was the point of this? One, really good game for me. Two, I hope it shows you guys that uh, A, early laning against Camille, just sort of playing back, trading with your Qs, you don't really want to go too aggro, know your power spike, level 5 is always is your power spike, level 4 is okay, but level 5 is when you can really hammering away at them, mind your footing, mind your stuff like that, but also, once you are fed, once you are into the game, and once you do know what you're doing, you gotta play around your team. 
I don't think Aatrox will ever be a split push champion, and even split push champions, unless you are a hardcore dedicated hole breaker motherfucker sitting on the edge of the lane, okay, I think that it is really ideal to play around your team, and you should really focus more on that, okay, uh, play around your team, that's a good call, and yeah, that's basically it for this video, so this is the second video I've done like this, leave feedback, tell me if you like this, tell me if you want to see more videos like this. The last one didn't do so good, but I think that was sort of... I'm willing to try more of these because I think that the feedback was really positive, but the click-through rate wasn't. And I feel like potentially the issue is I need to have a better click-through rate. I, I need a better thumbnail or a better title or something to really... Because a lot of people commented they didn't really know what the video was. So I'm hoping... You know, I'm, will I'm willing to give this uh, a try or two, but uh, yeah, so that's this video. Um, I hope you guys enjoy it. Special shout out to my Patreon members. Thank you guys. You can see the Patreon um, link is in the description. That's extremely beneficial. If you do that for me at $3 a month, it helps me out immensely. Um, it's always just good to do, you know, if you ever want to support me and you don't want this channel to die, then Patreon. Um, especially shout out to my YouTube members as well. You guys are basically the Patreon of YouTube for me. And thank you everybody who likes, thank you everybody who subscribes, thank you everybody who leaves a comment down below. I hope you enjoy this, at least find this nice. I'm willing to try this idea a few more times. You know, we'll see where it goes, if it's actually something that people like watching. But, uh, until then, I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Uh, bye bye everybody.